Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are on part two of Rhea. She is one of um, two fairies that I um, did for the February 2023 event um, hosted by Monarch Coloring Events. Um, and um, she and all the other fairies that I have are at 40% off in my Etsy shop. So um, feel free to pop on over there and check those out. Um, that would be awesome. And uh, let's see, while we're at it, please, um, if you don't mind, give this video a little thumbs up. Help me... Um, get it seen and um, it's really good for my channel so I really appreciate it. Um, let's see I am right now going to before I forget throw a little bit of some warm gray. I don't even know if this is dark enough. We better go a little bit darker um, on her teeth here. As we know, we don't um, we don't have bright white teeth. Yeah, this will work. Just a little bit of this warm gray, kind of underneath her lip, and in the outer. Might even go a little bit darker than that. That looks better. Let's do um, let's do a little bit darker. This is Warm Gray 3 Polychromos. Just, uh, I think, go with that. I think that works. Yes, okay. Um, let's see, we didn't use that one, we used those two. All right, so we are going to work on her hair today. Um, before I forget, did I do anything? I did, I did do something. Bear with me for one second, I'm gonna pull out a little blender stump. This one's not too bad. I'm just, just gonna, just gonna check it. Make sure it's not. I want it to be kind of clean, but sometimes a blender stump um, blends even better than using a, um, you know, blender pencil because it doesn't add any wax to your um, to your page. So you're not, you're not adding more product. You're just moving around what's on there. So um, after we finished yesterday, I actually added um, a little bit more of the Caput Mortem to underneath her lip to kind of give her lip that a little bit more poutiness. You know, there's, um, it was really hard for me to not want to keep going um, on her skin. This is the... Uh, Caput Mortem. I think I'm good with her now, though. Um, I think I'm satisfied enough that I can relax and let it go. So we can work on her hair. So I pulled out some colors that I've never used as a color combo before, which is kind of fun. Um, they are, we've got two Prismas and one um, polychromos will show you which one I'm using. Is this the paper? Or is this? No, this is it. Okay, so we're using um, seashell pink and white from Prismacolor. And um, that would be this color here. And of course, white. And then I pulled out the Polychromos Nougat, which is actually almost identical to the Light Fast Van Dyke Brown. So either one of those two colors, if you have them, um, are gonna give you the same, the same look. 
Um, okay, so I'm just going to go. Um, this is a little different for me because I'm used to being able to um, do my hair on my tan paper when I'm using white as a color, but I'm not using white as a color this time. White is going to... Um, so I'm going to have to do things a little bit differently than I normally would, but I think that's okay. Before I get started, though, I do feel like I want her... Um, I want her eyebrows to be dark, so I'm going to use the Polychromos Nougat, and let's just go ahead and do her eyebrows, cover up some of that gray. All right, I'm going to start with the seashell pink. So Prismacolor 1093. So I went through all my pencils and I relabeled them because I had I had um, made some changes to the color order um, because the uh, order that I had them in was an was when I like first started coloring. So I went through and redid my chart. But when I did that, I, re I renumbered all the pencils. And now they all have the number, the name number and my um, order number on them. And it makes things so much easier <laughs> to be able to see um, and give you numbers because honestly, sometimes those, those ones that are written on the pencils are so hard to read either because they're written in a weird, um, oh, you know, I should probably start on this side of her um, head, don't you think? Work left to right if I'm right-handed? Yes. Anyway, so yay, and then maybe even you might be able to read them um, when I'm coloring. You know, you'll either see the number or the name, hopefully, so maybe that will help as well. All right, back up here. We're going to start up here, and then we'll work our way. So this is a color that um, I haven't, I don't use very often. And the funny, well, I don't know if you call it funny. The funny thing is, the weird thing is, when I first swatched the my Prismacolor pencils three years ago, over three years ago, um, I swatched them on a pretty smooth paper. <clears throat> and I don't know what, hmm, this could be, before I, before I continue my story and before I go any further, bear with me for one second because I need to draw in um, some stuff so that I do not color over it. This is the edge of a petal. That's the edge of a petal. Oh, well, that was pretty easy. Okay, good. Okay, that wasn't as, that wasn't as, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, anyway, when I first swatched my Prisma colors and and this color in particular. Um, this color, and there were a few other colors that I swatched out. And they swatched out so odd, um, so blotchy, like they were almost like they were two um, colors in one pencil, you know. Um, and so at that point, I said to myself, well, I'm probably never going to use these colors because they're awful. Um, and I did not like them at all. Okay, now my white. And um, and so for three years, the, the, this, this color has been sitting in my um, pencil case with being just completely ignored because of how 
that it swatched out that first um, that first time. And when I was swatching them out again on different paper this time, three years later, um, this is the nougat, right? That one I didn't I didn't renumber. So nougat 178 polychromos. Um, when I swatched them out this last time, I was like, oh my gosh, these these are not behaving the way they did the first time. And I realized that I had been um, avoiding the seashell pink um, and a couple of others because of how they swatched. And it was probably more user error than the problem with the pencil. So now I have these new this new color that I can use in um, in my set. Like I feel like I've got a whole new a whole new color. So, um, yeah. So this is what we're gonna use for her hair. to the seashell pink. And before I like just completely forget and don't even think about it at all, I think I'm gonna take something that I used last time for her skin. What would be good? Well, I'll just... Um, um, why do I not see what I, oh, here we go. Um, let's use the Derwent Light Fast Salmon and put that down the center of her part. Okay, carrying on. Um, the seashell pink. Let's use a little bit of the nougat. Always come back up and work on this some more. I think I'm going to go ahead and work down. So, um, seashell pink. white um, I am going to say that I am really loving this paper I know I said it yet last time too um, but the more I use it every time I use it and I look at the results I get excited all over again about it um, maybe you guys have a white paper that you love um, and you get this kind of results, but I've never gotten this kind of results on white paper before. I've always struggled. I've never liked it. That's why I latched on so hard to that Nina Desert Storm because it was um, such a great um, option for me because I really just did not enjoy coloring on white, but I 
have enjoyed every minute of coloring on this moon rock paper, so I'm really excited. All right, so, and uh, it, it is, it's a totally different um, te uh, mindset and techniques that you have to use. The whole preserving of the whites um, kind of sucks. <laughs> I'll, be I'll be honest, that is not my favorite part, but um, it's, it just seems so much easier on this paper for me than um, any other paper I've used before. So I'm pretty excited. So basically what that means is that you'll be getting more tutorials from me using white paper um, than ever before. So hopefully that's good. But I will say, I don't know if you can tell or if you can see, but... Um, White does show up on this paper um, on top of other colored pencils. Not nearly like it would on, um, on the Desert Storm, but um, definitely better than plain old white. Um, they have a gray as well. They have a gray color, um, which I've thought about trying, but it in... In all honesty, I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with just having a tan and a white as far as um, favorites go. All right, so there are some hairs here. Normally, um, yeah. normally on white paper when I'm doing hair, I can use my slice tool and slice out um, the hairs, um, the, the flyaways. Um, but this is a really light colored hair, so I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not, which is why I chose to kind of put those few white hairs in there first to try and um, act as a little bit more of a resist for, for me. So I'm going to just kind of color in between them. See, I can still see them, which makes me kind of happy. Um, so I am, um, I was very disappointed to discover that Etsy is not doing its job. <laughs> Um, so, um, earlier this, in the week, I had posted one of my brand new coloring pages. That was the, um, oh, I'm having a mind, I'm having a, uh, a brain fart, as my, as my husband calls them. Um, at, um, Adelina, I, Boy, that's a little frustrating when you can't even think of the name of your own coloring page. Anyway, I posted her um, earlier in the week on Etsy, and um, nothing was happening. I got no, um, I got no likes, no favorites of it, no sales of it. Um, it was like it wasn't even on the page and it was, I looked, it was on the page. It was, it was in my shop. Um, but they, um, there's been no, even as of right now, <laughs> um, as of the recording of this video there, it never, um, showed up in people's, um, uh, what's it called? Um, where you get notified. Up, you know, like <laughs> my brain. Why is my brain not working? I hate it when that happens. The updates, the little updates at the bottom when when people um, put new items in their shop, and it says so and so, you know, has a new item in their shop. Um, well, it it hasn't sh showed up in anybody's feed in that way, and so it's kind of fallen flat. Um, nothing's been happening with it, and that's that's really. It's really depressing and really and really frustrating when you work so hard on on something and um, you ex 
you expect the people who are taking your money <laughs> to provide a service and they're not. So, um, I have no idea why I started talking about that other than my friend just um, sent me a message <clears throat> and said that it still hasn't shown up um, as a newly listed item in her updates. So it's very, very frustrating. Um, you know, we as artists are having a hard enough time right now as it is with with all the AI art that's come out. I'm not going to get into that very strongly because I know it's such a controversial topic. Um, but if you, I, I, my hope is that if you really knew what AI art was, um, you would not support the people who are creating it because it's it's so bad for all the artists that we love as colorists and um, you know I'm choosing not to support something that's made by a computer when I can punch in you know four or five keywords and have the computer generate an image for me I don't consider that um, a piece of art so I'm sorry I'm going to shut up now because I told myself I wasn't going to talk about it um, as as frustrating as it is for so many of us. Anyway, on to happier things. I think it's turning out good the way she's turning out so far. Um, I want to be able to get, I guess that's okay. Yeah, I got to think about happier stuff right now so I don't get distracted in what I'm doing. definitely a little bit harder, I think. Um, maybe you guys who are experts at working on white paper don't find this to be the case, but I'm, I definitely think that working on the um, white is definitely harder than working on the tan. This is the seashell pink. Sorry, I probably haven't been naming them, but I think you can tell the difference between the seashell pink and the nougat and the white. All right, let's see if this um, nougat is warm enough to cover this gray scale. If it's not, I might have to pull in a darker, warmer color right underneath here. I kind of feel like that's looking really gray. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen if I do. Don't do this. If you're <laughs> following along with me, um, don't, don't do this yet. All right. Huh? 
It's not too shabby. This is the Caput Mortem. And I am not going to use this all over her head, but I think just right in this area where the gray was really the darkest. Let me go over it with some of this seashell pink. really took care of that pretty well so I'm I'm good with that all right there's something about this that's a little bit better Yeah, it definitely takes longer for me to do hair this way, but kind of enjoying the process. Um, it's almost like this um, paper is just off-white enough <laughs> that I can kind of see where I'm putting my my white marks. That's kind of cool. I have to switch back and forth just to make sure that I don't um, forget anything. All right, this in here needs to be dark. Maybe we'll get lucky and the white will show through with the slice tool in these dark areas. I almost <clears throat> think I might come in with an even darker color for some of the deepest shadowy areas. And I'm going to go ahead and bring her hair down 
off the page like I like to do. I printed her with a border around her so she wouldn't um, print off the off the page like my stupid printer likes to do. I don't know what's up with that, but hopefully I'll be able to Just my own um, personal weirdness. <laughs> it's like I don't like borders on my pages. Yeah, that white is definitely showing up better than it does on regular white paper. Okay, back to seashell pink. Nougat. Okay, I do. Yeah, I think I would be probably close to being finished with the hair by now if I was doing this on the white paper. It's okay. It's okay. Did I say white? I was doing this on the white paper. I am doing this on the white paper. I meant on my tan paper. I'm really hoping that I can get some um, flyaway whites on here because to me that's what makes the hair look so much more realistic. If I can't get those, then that really makes me unhappy. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to see if uh, blending does any... I've definitely found that in the doing of my swatches, there are definitely some colors that um, when you blend them, it brings out their true color. Um, it changes the color of what you thought that the color looked like. And it really brightens um, the colors. So sometimes blending really makes a difference. Sometimes not so much. 
All right, I want to see what will happen. I have to look for my, for my slice tool. Oh, come on. It's got, oh wait, it's probably in this. Too many supplies all over my desk. There it is. I even have a piece of blue tape on it so it shows up better on the... All right, now I'm not, this may or may not work because again, like I said, this um, hair color is pretty light and um, I mean it it shows um it shows okay on the darker areas which is good Definitely shows up best when it's going um against the um uh, against the, what am I trying to say? Perpendicular? Perpendicular to the direction of the hair. It, it works better. Let's see what happens if I try and use my white Prisma. It's not terrible. It's not fantastic, but it's not terrible. Um, be better to do some flyaways out out here with the seashell pink. That's not bad. I like that. All right, let's move on to side two. I think that's okay. Right after I add a little bit of seashell pink to that little piece of hair right there. Yeah, I think that that's okay. All right. And away we go. Let's um, let's do the same thing I did over here. I'm going to use my white to kind of put some of these bigger bits that I want to be white. And that actually should be skin tone in there, I think. So, um... Let's take our Caput Mortem very lightly. And what else did I use? Peach. Let's try some peach. Ooh, that's really dark, but it would be dark, wouldn't it be? I mean, it's it's in the shadows underneath her hair. Let's we'll start there. I think once I get the color on, it'll it'll look better. Okay. Back to up here with the seashell pink. Sorry, I just saw this area and I'm like, oh, I want that to be darker. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to sharp. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my, uh, my sandpaper. Just to give this a little sharp point.
I'm actually using this and just blending that um, skin tone right, right here. That worked out just fine. And I think the slice tool will work to, um, to pull some of that out. So. sharpen it. We're going to come in here in between these white clumps of hair. I'm going to put some white right here. I don't, I don't know if you got if you guys can hear um, what's going on out outside of this room. It's very loud to me, um, but you may not be able to hear it. But Cooper is out. He's out in the kitchen because um, the wind, the doors open, the back doors open, and he's out there in the kitchen, just crying to go outside. Um, except that he does that. He, he's, he's like, cries to go out, cries to come in, because he wants to be out with his dad. Um, but then once he's outside and he realizes that his dad is working and ignoring him and, he, and it's boring, then he cries to come in. And then he sees his dad outside and he cries to go back out again. <laughs> So all I, while I'm here and I'm working, all I hear is just this poor, sad, pitiful little whining cry from my dog. 
And it makes me want to like say, hey, I'm going to shut the I'm going to shut this off for a minute and I'm going to go let my baby outside because he's crying. And then I'll do that and then I'll hear him crying to come back in again in 10 minutes. So I probably won't. Okay, let's break out the nougat. Oh. I caught it, I caught it. can't tell. Part of me feels like I still want to go a little bit darker down here.
Getting there. All right, I'm gonna smush this around a little bit. Start with the pencil. Well, actually, I think I can come onto the wings a little bit. This is not working great. That's okay. It's okay. All right, let's go with the slice tool. Got some, a couple of little skinny hairs there on her cheek. Break up that little dark spot right there with some, with some light ones. Let's get a couple on her. Now we got a couple right here on her shoulder. And actually, once we um, do the wings, we should be able to come in and scrape a few more. Um, and maybe on top of her shirt, once we get her shirt done, we'll be able to scrape a few more um, there too. But the more... Um, the more of them I can create, to me, the more realistic, whoops, the more realistic that hair um, really looks. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I think I'm gonna take my, a sharp um, seashell pink, because I don't want them too dark. I might do a few. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I, um, I might have to, me person, I might have to just come in here person, just off camera when I'm not, you know, and just work on this edge here because I don't, <clears throat> I don't like, um, I don't like seeing that line. And that's just going to be me slowly working on blending on blending that out but I'm not going to do that on camera there's not, not really any need um, I like those on her on her face that's good very good I'm happy with that I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull that off or not. Um, okay, so we have about half an hour because I that took me an hour. Um, what can we do in half an hour? I don't want to get started up here because I'm pretty sure that this 
um, her crown is going to take me, you know, the full, a full section. So, um, maybe we'll, maybe let's, let's work on her shirt. Um, when I originally did it, I gave her a white shirt, um, for a couple of reasons, um, but mostly because the lighter the color, the easier it is for you guys to color in the end. Um, and white gives me the lightest um, looking color. I'm really, I'm really happy with how she's coming out, guys. I have to, I'm a little bit giddy right now because I'm really excited about how she came out. Okay, sorry. Um, purples. Let's look at these purples. Lots and lots of purples. Um, her, um, the purples that I'm going to use for the flowers up here are kind of in the bluer purple range. And the purple that I'm going to use in her wings, yeah, that's a little bit of both. I don't think I want to go really dark, but I don't think I want... Let's do, um, hmm, I really like this Wild Lavender Light Fast. Um, so let's do that because it's a color that we we used um, in her skin. The Polychromos Violet is nice with it. And um, we have a darker purple light fast that we pulled out too, didn't we, from before? I can't find it at the moment, but I know it's in there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this Derwent Light Fast Wild Lavender, and um, and then we'll go. We'll go darker with something if we need to. Just looking for that other light fast color. I know I had it. There it is, purple. Okay, so again, um, there are so many beautiful purples to choose from. You don't have to um, do what I'm doing in any way, shape, or form. So um, I'm going to start... I just gently, I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not. I might regret this decision. Sometimes putting this down is a bad idea, but I'm going to put a little bit of white. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. All right. So Derwent Lightfast Wild Lavender. If you don't have this, just pick a purple that you like. So my um, my goal here, and why I put that white down, was to try and um, make these this look like gathered elastic, you know, a gathered sleeve. So we want the center of each kind of little clump, <laughs> little little gather of fabric to be a little bit lighter than the outside.
This shirt might wind up taking me much longer than a half an hour. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll get as much of it done as we can and then... a little bit more in here. All right. So I don't want to rush because <clears throat> this is going to turn out much better if I just really take my time with lots of little teeny, tiny little smooth application of the pencil. And I know me and I always rush when I'm filming. And I don't want to rush. So if I use the purple, oh, I have to think about this a little bit because that's going to be quite a different, that's a very, um, that's very red. And I don't think I want it to be red. I want it to be a blue. I want them to be blue purples. So we're going to scratch the purple. Not going to do that. Um, Holbein Pansy is a really nice color. Prisma Violet could work, but I really like the color of this um, pansy polychromos blue violet. That could work. Why don't we do that? I'll take out my polychromos. Blue violet. Let me just see. Worked out nicely. Okay, let's try this polychromos blue violet. That's better, I think. Boy, that almost looks too blue. What 
I want. Yeah, I think that that's going to be okay. I do. All right, I'm going to put a little... I put a little white right there. Then the wild lavender. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit of white right here. I could probably do this without the white. Let me try and see if I can do this without the white. That's one of those skills I'm trying to get better at, preserving the white. Again, I think I'm going to work on just building the color up slowly so that if I make a mistake, I can erase it a lot easier. All right, let's see. Still like this blue violet. Right back to wild lavender, light fast. So I'm using a really light touch. One of these actually should. Uh, it's a little better. All right, this right here is a Pleat, is that the word? Not really. Like a little gather. I want to make sure that's in there. It's right here.
is the kind of stuff I like to do while I'm just med not meditating. Um, you know, just like the mindless, it's kind of mindless and soothing. But I usually have a book on. Um, I am, uh, I'm a huge Audible, um, I love Audible. I, I, uh, I've given them a lot of my money over the years. <laughs> But I love it because I don't have to watch. I can listen. I can multitask. So right now I'm listening to a Stephen King. Stephen King's newest novel called Fairy Tale. And um, so far I really like it. I haven't gotten to the really good stuff yet. I haven't gotten to like the meat of the story. I'm, I just kind of recently started it. Um, but I really like it so far. When I was young, um, like in my teens, I used to love Stephen King. Can't stand the movies, <laughs> but loved the books. Um, probably because the scary parts didn't have to be so scary in my mind. You know, I could, I could enjoy the story, but not visualize the really scary stuff. Whereas when you're watching mo the movies, you know, they like to, they like to make things really graphic. But then I kind of got away from his stuff and when I saw this one in the list of things, I got kind of excited because of the because of the uh, subject matter. They call it a dark, a dark fairy tale, which you know it is Stephen King after all, so that would make sense. But it takes place in the real world. It's a it's a you know contemporary fairy story. So. And just picture Coop getting all of your dogs all riled up if you're listening. If you're listening when your dogs are around, sorry about that. Let's do some blue violet. Oh, you guys, I don't know about that color. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike it to the point where I want to take it out. But it's all, I can't seem to find. Let's just go with good old Prisma Violet and see what that does. Because I can't seem to, that one's a little bit too blue. And I, I really just want a darker purple. 
so what, let's see what this does. I think that's closer to what I want. Can't quite tell because there's so much of that blue showing still, but I think that's more like what I want. I actually kind of like the mix of the um, of all the different purples. It's kind of nice, actually. I need a lot more of that light, fast, wild lavender, but this kind of blocks out <clears throat> uh, where I want things, where I want the creases to be and stuff, so this is good. We want lots of um, darks and lights and the mid-tones in here because that's what's going to kind of give the shirt or dress um, the movement that we want that's going to make it look puffy in places and so it's not flat. All right, I'm going to come back to the wild lavender. Actually, I think I want to put some of this in here, this violet. Prisma.
really, really like these light fast pencils. Do a little bit more of the violet. To this one. So, um, I, I think that I'm going to end, you know, probably, I don't know, what have I got, like five more minutes. Um, so you've seen kind of the, the basis of how I'm going to continue on with this. And I think I'm just going to finish it off camera because I'm not going to be doing anything um, extra fancy compared to what you're seeing right now. Basically, I'm just going to continue building up the, the color because I've probably got a good half an hour um, of doing this. Actually, you know what I might do? I might switch it to double, to just double time. Um, I'll just keep going, but I'll, I'm just going to speed through it. And that way you can watch it come together if you want to, or if you want to um, just um, go away <laughs> if you want to, if you just want to end the video. And um, uh, do it yourself. That's great too. But literally this is kind of all I'm going to be doing is just continuing on to build up until I get enough, <clears throat> enough coverage on her shirt. Um, before I'm finished. So um, I think what I'll do is sign off now, say goodbye. Um, I will go ahead and switch it to the double time. And then when the double time is over, um, again, as I always do at the end of the video, I will um, scroll through the, um, you know, I'll give you a, 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 a scrolling photograph of the finished product. So 
Um, until I see you guys again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and um, I will see you guys um, next time to do her, um, her flower crown. See you later. Bye.